This might be one of the most challenging feats you can do in Hearthstone right now. Because somebody was able to reach rank 1 legend with a Demon Hunter deck. Levick was able to reach rank 1 legend with his take on Relic Demon Hunter. And for some reason, HS Replay keeps referring to this deck as Big Demon Hunter, and I really don't understand the reason why. Because the only big minions that we have in the deck are Shelag of the Abyss, Artificer Zymox, as well as Sire Denathrius. However, there is a very big way that we can set up wins for this deck, and it's all thanks to the Relic Synergies. But before I continue, I have to warn you guys. This deck is challenging. This is not one of those decks that allows you to misplay even once. And unfortunately with how this deck works, you may not even know that you're misplaying because you're just trying to play for tempo. But this is one of those decks that really forces you to understand why you're going to win in specific matchups. And luckily, after about 30 games with this deck and watching Levick climb with this deck on his stream, I think I've finally figured out how we're supposed to play Relic Demon Hunter. And if you find any information in this video useful, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for even more content and deck guides. The most important part of this deck is mastering your win cons. And you're usually going to win the game in the following three ways. Your first win condition is obviously the Kael'thas, Sinstrider, Bran, and Desire Denathrius combo. And even if Kael'thas or Desire Denathrius get hit by some kind of nerfs, I still think that they're going to see play in this deck. The only nerf that I can imagine happening would be Kael'thas Sinstrider being set to 1 mana on the 3rd minion. But to be honest, even if they end up nerfing this card, you have insane mana cheat potential to where you may not even care about any of the nerfs coming up. So for the rest of this video, I would like to assume that this deck is not getting nerfed in any way. Your second win condition is the mana cheat potential possible because of Relic of Dimensions. This is by far one of the highest valued cards in this deck. Because it's not that uncommon for you to cheat anywhere between 7, 8, 9, even 10 mana. This is another reason why I don't believe that the nerfs are going to make that much of a difference, because as long as Sire Denathrius is able to deal game-winning amounts of damage, then being able to make these cards 0 mana is going to be powerful no matter what you do. It's just a matter of whether or not the Demon Hunter is going to have enough time to build this up. But in order to be successful with this deck, you have to ensure that you get as much value out of your Relic of Dimensions as possible. This is not a card that you are going to frequently use in order to just draw two cards and maybe discount one or two mana. This is one major win condition that you have to try and build around to where your turn five is going to be massive. Which is why the mulligan can make or break this deck, and we'll get to that here in a second. But Relic of Dimensions is the most important card that you need to try and build your overall strategy around, because if there's one strategy that always works in Hearthstone, it's definitely Mana Cheat. And your last win con is to try and build up a big board, which is why I believe HS Replay is confusing this deck as Big Demon Hunter. How are you able to generate these massive boards? It's all thanks to cards like Artificer Zymox, as well as Relic of Phantasms. According to Levick, one reason that you can be favored into the Druid matchup is because of how quickly you can set up these gigantic boards thanks to your Relic synergies. And this is part of the reason why I feel like Sire Denathrius is only a side player in this deck, because this is one of the main ways that you're going to win most of your games is through tempo. And when you're able to tempo out a full board, say of like 13, 13 minions as early as turn 7 or turn 8, even druids have a hard time being able to deal with that. Insatiable Devourer is going to be the only way they're going to even have a chance of being able to come back. And these kind of big boards are the reason why I feel like players like Levick are able to play Demon Hunter consistently. Because when I was playing this deck, I did not have any games where I made relics over 10 attack. But at the same time, I wasn't focusing on that game plan. I was just trying to focus on making Kael'thas Sinstrider work with Zymox or Sire Denathrius. And this is just not one of those decks to where you can tunnel vision on one or two strategies. You have to use what's in front of you, and there are times where you can actually topple the idol your own board in order to set up for the gigantic payoff that you've been waiting for. And this definitely showcases why you're not able to misplay with this deck, but how you're not even going to notice some of the misplays because some of these plays are honestly really difficult to find. While I was playing Relic Demon Hunter, I ended up with a record of 15 and 16. Which is not all too impressive, but I was able to maintain these games all in top 300, top 400 legend. And while playing with this deck, I really can't tell you what matchups are supposed to be that favored. But according to Levick, you're fair into everything except for rogue scams. 
There was one game that I had in particular where Rogue just did its thing on turn 4, and there was nothing that I could have done to stop it. And unfortunately, scam decks are probably Demon Hunter's biggest weakness right now. You have a pretty good shot against Spooky Mage, but Scam Mage can sometimes just do ridiculous things. And even when you have the chances of summoning a gigantic board, we all know that mages like to freeze the board over and over and over again. So I can understand the mage matchup feeling more like a 40-60% matchup, but there are ways of being able to win against it. I personally was not able to win that many games against Druid, but again, Levick's strategy of being able to summon big minions was not something I was actively trying to do in these games. However, I was able to clutch out a decent amount of rogue wins thanks to the scam potentials in this deck. So even though Rogue is supposed to be one of your quote-unquote worst matchups, Demon Hunter does feel like it has a solid matchup against a lot of decks on the ladder. Now let's go over the mulligan. Because in order to be successful with this deck, it is all about being able to mulligan for Relic Vault. This is by far one of the most important minions, and I'm surprised that this card is not kept more often than Sigil of Alacrity as well as Far Watch Post. But if you look at its mulligan win rate, it is obscenely higher than the rest of the cards on this list even higher than Relic of Dimensions, and that is worth saying something. Obviously, you want to try and keep every single Relic card that is given to you. So keeping your Relic Vault, Relic of Extinction, Relic of Phantasms, as well as Dimensions are just key in order to do anything with this deck. Which is another reason why we include cards like Venomous Scorpid, because not only can it be a good threat against gigantic taunts from Druid, but you can find yourself another Relic or some other spell in order to help you in certain situations. But this is not a card I would usually keep in Mulligan. The last card that you could arguably keep in the Mulligan is Theatar the Mad Duke, and honestly there were some times that Theatar was massive for me to win the game, but I don't think this is how you're supposed to win most of your Hearthstone games. Theatar can be important against decks like Mage and Druid, but unfortunately if you steal the card and you don't play it the next turn, then it's really not doing you a lot of value if your opponent can just play Theatar again. So if you're trying to steal one of the hero cards from these classes, I can understand keeping Theatar the Mad Duke, but honestly, I would just focus on the relics because this is how you're going to win most of your games. But in the end, I would recommend keeping these cards more than anything, because the relics are the most important, and Far Watch Post has amazing potential at being able to scam games and give you a little bit more time to set up your meaningful combos. And in all honesty, Far Watch Post is a great tool against Druid in order to stop their mana ramp from being too meaningful. Now let's look at the mulligan win rate. We'll see a little bit of a change here because we have cards like Zelag and Kurtris Demon Render showing their faces, but this is just to showcase the power level of these cards and how cards like Artificer Zymox and Sire Denathrius are not necessarily the cards that you're going to be winning with every single game. And if we'll notice the two cards at the top, we have Relic Vault and we have Relic of Dimensions. Again, cementing that you absolutely need to pop off with your relics and discount as much mana as possible to be as consistent with this deck as you can. There's really not too much change in the kept win rate versus the mulligan win rate, but I thought it was interesting in order to showcase that Zymox and Sire Denathrius are really not the cards you're trying to focus on too much. There are going to be times where you absolutely need your legendary minions in order to seal the game, but the point that I'm really trying to paint here is that tempo is a very powerful thing. And as long as you're playing the cards and making a big board before your opponent has any chances of being able to remove it, this can be a way that Demon Hunter can scam games effectively. And being able to focus on that possibility is just going to give you more chances of being able to summon ridiculous boards as early as turn 5. Overall, I do still believe that Demon Hunter is in a very awkward spot when it comes to its power level compared to other classes. But once we get some nerfs that are going to eventually tone down the top 3 decks, I think that Demon Hunter has a very real shot at becoming a top contender. And if you're still confused on how to play this deck, I have attached some games in order to help you with your decision making. If you really think that you understand this deck, try watching my games and see if you make the exact same plays in your head. And if you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified about any of our future updates. And if you would like to see these clips live, we stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, relic me, dude. Because <laughs> when this deck performs, it performs. I'll tell you that right now, guys. It is very beautiful when this when this uh, all comes together. My blood boils for war. Uh, do I need? Do I need to kill that immediately? Oh, dude, I don't want to do this right now, but he's forcing me. 
actually forcing me to do this? How dare you? I mean, do I ever just wait? There's no, there's no way I can wait. I have to kill that. If he's also got like a trog waiting, I'm gonna get completely destroyed, dude. I can't use like Chaos Strike or something. I really didn't want to use my coin this way, but oh, there's another one. There's another one. Yep. Okay, so it's gonna be one of these. Ooh, but Starfish might help out. Starfish might help out later, but for now, we're probably just gonna play this. Okay. Uh, Token Druid, I feel like it's really bad if you don't have Topple, which luckily I do. But dude, that has to be Fury, right? That literally has to be Pride's Fury, so I'm gonna have to take a bit of damage here. If you hit me up on Twitter, then, uh, then yes, I probably would have seen it. But I don't think you sent me anything on there. So you talking about Twitch? Okay, then yeah, I'm assuming that it's Twitch then. Yeah, I haven't, I don't think I've seen it yet. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to check it out here. Wait a minute, do I actually silence now? This is 11 damage. 3, 4, 5, 6 versus 11. This is the one thing I really struggle with this deck is like weighing the options. I think this is actually the time to play Starfish. Cause like I need to I need to reach my topple turn. If I reach the topple turn, I can win the game, right? It's very unlikely that he draws the perfect four. I don't think we can play around that. Have mercy. I will that is acceptable. That is acceptable. Now we're back now we're back to the eleven a turn, which I guess I can handle. If I would have done this though. Still be, I still would be taking a lot. Maybe this was correct. Squirpid? This trades here for, for maximum damage prevention. This has to hit like some kind of... Um, I hit like Relic or something. Dang, I really wish I would have hit uh, Fel Barrage like last turn or something. Dang, that would have been pretty good if I had one more mana. Alright, well I guess we just do this then. Alright. I don't know if I'm gonna- I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, uh, to get this, man. So, uh, that 11 would've been 15, I was at 22, I'd be at 7. And then I'd still be taking, like, another 3, potentially 5 with this, so maybe this was the correct play. Cause I'm st- I mean, I'm, I'm still at 5. Maybe it didn't matter all too much. Okay, well I have to AoE here. Is there ever a reason to play this instead? There's no 2 drops that make a difference, so no. Uh, I guess Squirpid. If only I could have, like, tutored it with, like, Sigil or something. That'd be kind of cool. Why you Pyro yourself on turn one? Dude, I play Pyroblast on myself every single time I'm playing Demon Hunter. Like, I'm, all, I'm starting the game at 20 life most times. <laughs> oh, dude, don't hit anything nuts. We're gonna see if we can't win a few games with this deck, because apparently somebody hit rank one Legend with it. And if someone hits rank one legend with a deck, you know that I'ma play it. I guess we do this first. Is there any healing that I can find? Wait. What? Okay. All right, Gu guys. Guys, hear me out. Hear, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. All right. Proving grounds. Find Sire Denathrius. Doesn't matter what the other minion is. I get ten life. I ten life win game. We're picking proving grounds. Oh my god. What the fuck about to happen here? I mean, I have to go for it. For the content, I have to go for it. This has to work. We pull, we pull Sire Denathrius every time. And as long as he doesn't have a board, it doesn't matter, right? Oh, that's annoying. Okay, that's very annoying. Okay, come on, dude. Proving Grounds win game, right? And then next turn, I can start doing stuff with School Teacher, maybe. Oh God. Come on, give me the, give me the Denathrius. Easy, easiest win of my life. Oh, wait. Or, or that happens. You know, that's not that bad. We'll take the maximum amount of damage. Let's see, one, two, three, six, eight, nine. Is this better or is not nah, here a power probably? I need to kill him. I mean, at the same time though, I don't have like brand combos now. I just have my relic dimensions. These are essentially three a pop. Nine, 10, 14, 17. That's not enough to kill him, dude. He's like a freaking, uh, 
living roots away from killing me. All right, we don't care about that. Yeah, dude, like living roots is the only thing I'm scared of at this point. All right, cool, fine. There's, there, I don't think there's anything else in this deck that has damage. I don't think there's anything else in this deck that gives him damage. What's going on, Sailor Pete and Rafcat? Coming in with the Prime. Welcome back to the Horde, my friend. Good to have you back among us, back among our ranks. We hope you have a, a good stay, and we hope that we high roll this dimensions, right? Or do we go this into this? Maybe it's just better to find some, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this. There might be healing I can find from this, yeah? There might be some kind of healing I can find from this, right? Uh, predation, I guess, cause damage. And I-beam, I-beam will do it. I-beam will keep me alive. Uh, goodbye this, cause these things technically do more damage. Oh, that's the game. Oh, that's the game, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Decisions mattered in this game. Decisions mattered in this game. I love it. I love it when that happens. So pretty much I can just play whatever and like going going for rank one was something I was doing earlier But the moment I try to win uh, I try to like win seriously I end up like uh, I end up just throwing a lot of games and I don't want that to happen here Okay, I'm gonna be able to get a lot of value from this So I play this on two I do this on two and then coin this on three Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to like have like a coin five turn. That's like really impressive. So I want to be able to Relic Vault into, uh, into double up the extinction. And I guess Rogue it's probably going to be important. Maybe I should have kept the Theotar. Honestly, I just got rid of it because it wasn't a Relic. So the legends are true. <laughs> Wait, which legends? There's a lot of, there's probably a lot of, uh, a lot of legends about me. And I gotta, I gotta tell you which ones are true and which ones are false. Oh, yo, dude, that was insane. That was actually the best draw I could have asked for. Literally the best draw I could have asked for. Because now I can do this. And then I can do it again. Then I can do it again. Sure, you can set this up. I'm setting up my thing. I might even have a way to destroy your minion, depending on how well things go for me here. Alright, let's go. Give me tempo. Give me scorpids. Give me stuff that I can play. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, let's go! Oh my god, let's go! Yo, double watch post! Playable cards! <laughs> One door closes, another door opens. <laughs> double watch post, though, that's pretty insane. That just stops him from being able to do anything here. And then I could do it for, oh my god, six and seven on turn five? Hold on a minute. I could literally play Denathrius on turn five if I hit the right cards. Or now I could just play Theotar and just hopefully take the Edwin. All right. Draw four. What's, what's in the box? <laughs> Six is it? Wait, no, this is eight now, right? Oh. Oh. Incredible. Yeah, the, yeah, this is this is pretty incredible. incredible. <laughs> I've never had a better game with this deck. <laughs> kill the minion! Kill the minion! Oh, dude! Oh, if that would have killed the minion. Oh, that would have been perfect. Oh, it would have been perfect if it killed the minion, dude. Perfect game. We're just always, you know, a step away from perfection in this stream. Oh my god, dude, turn five. Turn five, I have done this madness. Please tell me it'll be enough to win. <laughs> I guess I could always topple into the Denathrius or something. I've also got Sigil, but it doesn't matter when you have a zero mana Kael'thas. Yeah, it's GG, dude. Get out of my game. Get out of my game, dude. Oh, wait a minute, I'm one damage off. Wait, but I have school teachers. 
<laughs> He's so mad! Oh, that's so mad! Oh no! Oh, they're so mad! Let's let's see how mad they are. Let's see if they're actually mad or if they're astounded. How many? That curve was ridiculous. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Best game out of 27 games. Been getting high rolled all day. Ah oh, man, it's not right. Oh my god, you know that 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 was good enough. That was good enough. That 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 rage was. Mm, that, that gave me life. <laughs> it wasn't even that much rage, but it was still good enough. It was definitely a nutty game though. It was definitely a nutty game. <laughs> oh, but it's just very copium. Oh my god, truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> oh, hi, Zena. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Come here. Do this to Okani. Yeah, come here. Yeah, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? You haven't said hi in a minute. You haven't been feeling too well, but you've been keeping down your meals today. We've been keeping down our meals, putting on a little bit of weight. Everything's looking good for Xena. Oh my. Oh my, I could do it again damn near. Dude, you play drums? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I I earn money playing drums. It's a, it's a cool profession. All right, so I'm gonna do this. Uh, I think I'm just gonna counter a minion. I really don't know what this guy's doing. Maybe we counter a spell because it could be a rogue. You know, I'm gonna counter a spell, dude. I don't know what this guy's playing. So we're just gonna try and deny the office drummer. Wait, who is the drummer at the end of the off? Oh, wait a minute. Are you talking about the guy who plays drums on the office? Because I remember, like, there was, there was, like, a... Oh, on Twitch. Okay, all right. No, I do not know who that guy is, actually. But I do know there was, like, you know, a thing... Uh, like, there was an episode of The Office where people were playing instruments. I personally don't care about The Office, but I... Do remember that episode? I was like, eh. Okay. Well, now I wish I would have countered a minion. Now I wish I would have countered a minion. Just countering a spell did not help. No, it did not. No, no siree. But I'm gonna double up my dimensions anyway, and it's just gonna high roll. I'm gonna give you permission to, uh. I'm gonna give you permission to, uh, to post the link if you have the link ready. Wait, did he play Sinstone? Okay, so he's got a 6-6. Six, six. I think I play Topple, but Topple can low roll. Nah, we still do this. Another can coin into this, depending on what we roll. Oh, dang it, I was about to be like, zero mana Theotar, let's go. Oh my god, but two mana Kael'thas is nutty. Don't think I care about any of these, but I guess Metamorphosis can end this game. Alright, so I have to kill one of these with my face. Hopefully this kills the six. Never lucky. Never lucky. We're gonna win next game though, right? Yo, Blaze coming in with the tier one! Welcome to the Horde, my friend. Good to have you here among our ranks. I'm glad that you joined voluntarily. We need, we need some recruits. Usually our recruits are, are, uh, are, um, recruited against their will. So we need some, you know, some willing participants. <laughs> I was in ad hell? Aw, oh, man. See, I, I tried to make the ads as tolerable as possible because I know that Twitch tries to make them as intolerable as possible. But I never, I never run ad breaks, like, manually. I always let that stuff, uh, figure itself out. Okay, so Denathrius just wins, right? So I could do this into this. Can I even like play like a third minion depending on what I find? My past cannot change me. Yeah, we're just going for it, dude. No for bad uh, I guess we just take Sinister. We give him a topple because it can what? Only deal like four damage. Submit. A toast. 
Suddenly Metamorphosis becomes a very real card, but I mean, at the same time, the 10-10 is the reason why we're winning this game, let's be honest. Suddenly, like, we're finding the way to beat rogues. What, three mana card? Ooh. Swing and a miss, dude. It's actually kind of sad. He could still kill Denethrius. Because, like, Wicked Stab into, like, prep deal four. Ah, but it wouldn't be good enough, man. Not bad, dude. Suddenly we're actually winning with this deck, and it's surprising. We're back to we're back to a 